a little formula. What do they want? Let's see. This calculates the gravitational force between two objects where G is the gravitational constant, M is the mass of one object and M2 is the mass of the other object. And R, of course, is the distance between them. Solve the positive value of R in terms of F, G, M, and in other words, solve for R. That's what they want. <clears throat> this one is going to be actually a lot easier. So let me write down the equation. So F of G, or F G, Okay, so now, what do I need to solve for R? Well, R is, in look, in every problem, I'm actually solving it. No, I'm solving it the same way, but I'm saying different things. Look, R squared is being divided over here. It's dividing this. So how do I make this R squared to be on top? At the end, I need something like R equals. I need this to be on top. I could just switch places with this, go like this, like that, okay? Because... Once I put this division over here, it's going to be turned into a multiplication, and then this is going to have to turn into a division. <coughs> so I could do that. Another way of doing it is I just put a 1 under it, and I cross multiply. Okay? So this times 1 is the same thing, so I get GM1, M2, okay? Cross multiply, equaling to R squared FG. Now... The other method was better. I just switched places with this. Because look, now I'm going to have to divide by FG on both sides. Okay? So they cancel out. And that leaves me with R square being GM1M2 divided by F of G. And now to find, remember, you have R square, but they want R. So take the square root take the square root all right so r equals and then you rewrite this over here got it okay then so let's do this question 77 so it says um dan took 12.5 seconds to run the 100 meter dash he calculated the time to be approximately and i'm like where is the question but i think i found the the the, the, the. oh i'm supposed to calculate it and see which of this is the right oh okay cool so 12.5 seconds to run the 100 meter dash. How do we calculate this? We measure it in, okay, the time. So I need time. So what do I need? It took 12.5 seconds to run that. So I need time. Let's see. If you run 100 meters in 12.5 seconds, okay, how many meters per second you run? 100 divided by 12.5 seconds. That is 8 meters, 8 meters per one second, right? 8 meters per second. But they're not asking you how many meters per second. They're asking you what was it's time they want backwards okay so then how am I gonna do this well it took the guy 12.5 seconds okay to run the hundred dash the hundred meter dash and look at each of the answers is given in minutes and hours Huh, interesting. Right. So what I need to do is, I know it's 12.5 seconds to run the 100 meters. That's what I know. But I need to turn this, this time in seconds, I need to turn it into either minutes or hours. So how am I going to do that? Well, how do I turn seconds into minutes? Well, first of all, I will have to turn it into something so I need to cancel seconds and to leave minutes so I know that 
one minute has 60 seconds so now look seconds is on top seconds in the bottom I can just cancel them out okay but I still have to basically divide by 60 right correct so 12.5 12.5 divided by 60 that gives me 0 0.208333 0 0.208333 the correct choice is choice number one okay it says I cannot even read anymore oh I'm losing my sight Peyton is a sprinter who can run the 40 yard dash in 4.5 seconds okay he converts his speed into miles per hour as shown below so he convert the speed which ratio is incorrectly written to convert this speed alright all I gotta do is look for the one that doesn't have a cancellation what do I know 40 yards per second so we have yards per second and he wants to turn it into miles miles per hour let's start from scratch 40 yards in 40 in 4.5 seconds 40 yards in 4.5 seconds okay I need to know okay first of all I need to know how many feet in one yard okay because I'm gonna go from feet to miles so <clears throat> I'm gonna turn yards into feet I know that there are three feet in one yard that's the microwave or that's something that is bothering me all right <clears throat> so yards cancel out and now I got feet per second oh, okay now I want to turn those uh, seconds into hour into minutes and then into hours so I am going to say that I got seconds in the bottom so I need seconds on top so 60 seconds is equal to one minute now seconds got cancelled out and I got feet per minute now I need to turn feet into miles okay so I know that in order for me to have to cancel to turn feet into miles I will have to have feet over here and miles on top right so there's 5280 okay I'm sorry for the number feet in one mile so I got I cancelled out feet okay so now I have miles per minute so now all I have to do is multiply this minute is on the bottom so I need minutes on top there are 60 minutes in one hour so now minutes cancel out with minutes and I got miles per hour I hope you understood this um, conversion for future problems you cancel the top with the bottom you need if you have a top you need a bottom to cancel so now which of these is incorrectly written well I can tell you right now this is incorrectly written you see how we convert it see that that's backwards then look 60 seconds one minute 60, uh, 60 minutes one hour uh, well we got everything right except for this guy haha <laughs> it's beautiful alright let's move on to the next one okay let's do this problem faith wants to use the formula for um, to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius look C of F means that the Celsius is a function of the Fahrenheit Celsius is a degree measure of temperature okay Fahrenheit the same thing this is what we use in the United States Fahrenheit and I guess the rest of the world uses Celsius so this is your formula now to convert degrees Fahrenheit F to degrees Celsius okay in if faith calculated uh, 68 degree Fahrenheit right to convert into degrees Celsius what would her result be 
So in other words, she has uh, 68 Fahrenheit. Okay, look, Celsius, C of F. Celsius as a function of Fahrenheit. So she has C of 68. What would her result be? Well, all I have to do is basically just substitute this into the formula. It's nothing fancy. So I will have 5 over 9 times the 68 degrees Fahrenheit that she has minus the 32 degrees uh, that we're supposed to take away. Okay. And what would this be? Well, put it in the calculator. Okay. And let's see now. So we'll put it on the calculator like that. We press enter and we get 20. So she will get 20 degrees Celsius if you if you actually do that. If not, you could just do it by hand, okay? So for example, 68 minus 32 would be 36. So this would be 5 over 9 times 36. All right? Now 36 divided by 9 is 4. So this turns into 5 times 4, which is 20. Same thing. All right, let's move on to the next question. A typical marathon is 26.2 miles. Allen averages 12 kilometers per hour. When running in a marathon, determine how long it would take Allen to complete a marathon to the nearest tenth of an hour. Justify your answer. All right, so the marathon is 26.2 miles but then this guy is running at 12 kilometers per hour I don't know why they would give you something like this but let's do it so I need to convert okay how long it would take for him to complete the marathon first he averages 12 kilometers per hour so I have 12 kilometers per hour I'm gonna try to turn that into miles per hour alright so how do I do this well how many kilometers are in one mile or let me see now wait I need to turn kilometers to miles so I need kilometers in the bottom so one kilometer is equal to 0.62 of a mile yeah nice right mile okay so that gives me a uh, 7.44 miles per hour okay I just turned kilometers into miles so that gives me 7.44 miles per hour per one hour so if this thing is 26.2 miles okay This thing is 26.2 miles and he's running at 7.44 miles per hour. So all I gotta do is take the 26.2 miles and divide it by, you know, like for example, if you have, um, let me see if I can find an example. If you're making, if your total salary should be, or the total amount of money is $1,000, okay? But then you're making $200 per hour. How long will it take you to reach that thousand dollars? That's the same thing. I will have to divide the thousand dollars by the amount of money you make per hour. So then, twenty-six point two divided by seven point forty-four. All right, and that gives me three point five hours. That's how long it will take him to finish the marathon. If you don't understand, please make a comment or ask a question. All right, the next one. Patricia is trying to compare the average rainfall of New York to that of Arizona. In compar uh, a comparison between these two states for the month of July through September would be the best would be best measured in feet per hour. Okay, first of all, I don't think I have never heard on the news feet per hour. So um, inches per hour? Hell no. Usually they not even inches. Per hour? No way. Feet per hour? No. So this cannot be. I mean, this don't make sense. Let's try the other one. Inches per month. Feet per month. Feet per month? Okay. We're talking about rainfall. I never heard. 
uh, in the news or in statistical analysis saying somebody saying uh, we have um, 30 feet of rainfall per month I never heard of that I mean one foot is 12 inches so if they say oh we have one foot this month 12 inches no I never heard that they usually give it to you in inches per month okay not inches per week not inches per day not inches per hour inches per month that's how they do it and anyway uh, be, look at the question it says a comparison for the months of July through September so we're not talking about hours we're talking about months and this is the best answer oh, okay here we go this is crazy a construction worker needs to move 120 feet, uh, cubic feet of dirt by using a wheelbarrow one wheelbarrow load holds eight cubic feet of dirt and each load takes him 10 minutes to complete one correct way to figure out the number of hours he would need to complete this job is one correct way all right so let's see let's analyze what's wrong with this picture here we have minutes and we have minutes so this right here will not cancel out minutes times minutes is minutes square so this cannot be one of our answers I hope you are understanding what I'm saying here again fit and fit no way remember you need to cancel if you need to cancel something you need to have one on top and the other one at the bottom all right uh, feet whoops no okay try this one anything repeated on top no anything repeated in the bottom no we're good you see that because feet cancels with fit load with load minutes with minutes and we end up with hours all right so that's it I don't see anything magical now if I wanted to come to, to compute it yes I will have to actually write down the whole thing but it didn't make any sense to do the conversion right now because I could automatically tell what would be canceling out and what would not be and what would be repeating so no 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 yes all right so let's take a look at this problem so a two inch long grasshopper can jump a horizontal distance of 40 inches okay so the grasshopper can do so a two inch can jump 40 inch, inches right oh, okay now that's the horizontal distance of the grasshopper an athlete who is five feet nine wants to cover a distance of one mile by jumping and basically if the person can jump the same as the grasshopper then how many jumps will it take to jump the one mile well two inch grasshopper goes for 40 inches so then the guy measures five feet nine inches therefore we're talking about five feet is 60 inches so five feet nine is 69 inches and he would jump I don't know what the distance is so we cross multiply right so when we cross multiply and divide by two we get 1380 inches okay so he can jump in one jump can he can do 1380 inches now how much is this inches are these inches in feet because we want to cover one mile so I'm gonna have to turn uh, transform this into feet and then into one mile so in feet all I have to do is divide this by 12 okay and I get 115 feet okay then so now how many times does he have to do this 115 to reach one mile well what do I know a mile is 5,280 feet if I divide this by 115 I get 46 so it will take him 46 jumps to travel one mile and you have to actually write it down okay justify your response it would take the guy uh, 46 jumps to travel one mile that's it okay move on to the next problem Oh, I did this already. Okay, let me try this. Read it first, okay? This time I'm not going to be uh, reading. You do it.
Okay. So, so the distance traveled is equal to the rate of speed, okay, multiplied by the time travel. That is the distance traveled. So D, okay, D, I'm gonna actually do it over here. D is equal to the rate of speed, okay, so equals to the speed. Multiply, sorry, multiply by the time traveled. Okay, so the speed 50 miles per hour, okay, 50 miles in, in two hours, that's 100 miles. Okay, now if the distance is measured in feet and the time is measured in minutes, then the rate of speed, okay, is what? So, in other words, the rate of speed they want us to solve for this S. Well, let's divide by T on both sides, and we get S equals to T over T. Okay? So now, let's see. If the distance is measuring feet, so distance is feet, so feet, and the time in minutes, time in minutes, see, time in minutes. Okay, then the rate of speed can be expressed in which unit? So basically, that's what I wrote. So the rate of speed is expressed in feet per minute because we just solved the equation for uh, speed, rate of speed. Speed. And that's it. All right, next question. So Loretta and her family are going on vacation. Their destination is 610 miles from their home. Loretta is going to share some of the driving. She's going to drive at 55 miles per hour for four hours, and her dad is going to try is go, is going to drive at 65 miles per hour. Okay, so I don't know for how many how long, but it doesn't matter. The plan is for her to drive for four hours, and dad is going to do the remainder of the trip. Determine the number of hours it will take to it will take her family to reach their destination. So that is the first question, because then we go on to the second question. So let us answer the first one. Okay, what do we know? Information that we know. The whole trip is 610 miles. Okay. Now, from the 610 miles, Loretta is gonna drive for four hours at 50 mi uh, 55 miles per hour. So this one gives you this one gives you a, a resulting expression of 600, 610 miles minus 220 miles that Loretta is going to drive. So what is that? Well, 610 minus 220, it's 390. So that means that daddy only has to drive 390 miles. But for how long? Well, think about it. I can do this. 390 minus what daddy has to drive how long daddy has to drive but that doesn't really help me much so what i'm gonna do is actually i'm gonna set up an equation i'm gonna say 390 miles is equal to the amount of driving that daddy is gonna do he's gonna be doing okay for i don't know how long so let's divide by 65 on both sides all right and x okay let's divide uh, 390 divided by 65 and that is 6 so daddy drives for 6 hours Loretta for 4 and it will take the family it will take the family okay it will take uh, 10 hours okay to reach the destination okay you write destination right okay now we have answered the first one let's see what's going on after Loretta has been driving for two hours she gets tired and said daddy come on take over uh, that's it oh my god so now how much time will the will the family will save by having her dad drive for the remainder of the trip well let's see let's compare so now for of the 610 miles Loretta is only gonna help daddy with two hours so she drives two hours 
that means that this turns into her driving 110 miles okay and now 610 minus 110 is 500 so that means that daddy has 500 miles left to drive okay so remember what I did here I could subtract 65x because 65 times the hours that he's driving but that's not gonna help me so I'm better off setting up the equation so I that is gonna drive at 65 miles per hour I don't know how long but it should it should only reach 500 it should be equal to 500 so I divide by 65 divide by 65 so 500 divided by 65 is 7.69 if I round I get 7.7 .7. so the thing is this that I will be compelled to subtract okay oh wait, wait, wait how much time will the family save by having her dad drive well if you get 7.7 .7, you would say oh the whole trip will only take 7.7 .7 hours instead of the 10 hours that it would have taken no on the contrary you need to go further 7.7 .7 only represents the amount of hours that it will take daddy to drive how about the two hours that, Lo that Loretta was driving that creates a total of 9.7 oh Bex you nice of course and now let's see how much time we'll actually save so 10 hours as opposed to 9.7 .7 hours so the family will save a total of 0.3 hours not even an hour so it's not really that much and that my friends is your answer to that question okay now let's move on to uh, the last question for this session this is a very obnoxious and annoying problem it's four, pro it's four points but my gosh I don't get paid enough for this Okay, an airplane leaves New York City and heads towards Los Angeles. As it climbs, the plane gradually increases its speed until it reaches cruising altitude. Okay, I still don't know anything. At which time it maintains a constant speed for several hours. Okay, yeah, I know that, yeah. So it goes like, and then constant speed. Okay. After flying for 32 minutes, the plane reaches cruising altitude. Oh, okay. So the guy was flying for 32 minutes and then after that it reached cruising altitude when you don't go up and down anymore okay the plane reaches cruising altitude and has flown 192 miles so in 32 minutes okay in 32 minutes the plane has flown 192 miles okay let me see what else do I know about this <laughs> all right no problem so 32 so where am I? i'm gonna have to do this uh here on a index card because it's too small okay after flying for 32 minutes the plane reaches a cruising altitude and has flown 192 miles so 32 minutes and it flew 192 miles all right cool after flying a total of 92 minutes, okay. After flying a total of 92 minutes, the plane has flown a total of 762 miles. 762 miles. All right. Determine the speed of the plane at cruising altitude. What? Okay. At cruising altitude. Cruising is when the plane is not going up. That's climbing. Mm -hmm. so let's see after now okay um, after 92 minutes the plane has flown a total of 762 miles so out of these 92 minutes total time remember that the plane was climbing for 32 minutes so in other words uh, this 92 is nothing more than the 32 minutes that it was climbing plus 60 minutes of cruising altitude. <coughs> I'm sorry. And then 
this 762 minutes is nothing more than the 192 minutes I'm uh, sorry oh my god the 192 miles that was climbing plus how much would that be how much do I need to get to 762 570 okay so this is actually the representation of this total right here so the cruising altitude is the 60 minutes and the 570 miles so what do I need to do easy remember what do I need to find it says uh, determine the speed of the plane okay speed is miles per hour okay cool so then 570 miles of real cruising okay distance over 60 minutes out of the 92 I hope you understand this so anyways so what do I get well let's see oh my god your battery yeah it's been saying that for days don't worry okay 570 over 60 and that is 9.5 so 9.5 miles per hour that is the cruising speed okay all right then now let's see what else what else do you have for me what else do you have for me uh, determine the speed of the cruising altitude we did that in miles per hour okay now write an equation to represent the number of miles the plane has flown y during x minutes at cruising altitude sure look they're telling me already write an equation y for x what x minutes okay so miles per hour an expression that represents what uh, the number of miles the plane has flown during x minutes at cruising altitude the number of miles during x minutes well at cruising altitude we already have this so it's 9.5 okay miles per x minutes yes all right cool then um, and yes I made a mistake this is 9.5 miles per minute because we are talking about minutes not hours all right cool then. what else do I need assuming that the plane maintains its speed at cruising altitude determine the total number of miles the plane has flown two hours into the flight this is annoying all right but we're still talking about cruising altitude you see that so I'm gonna use the equation that I have for cruising altitude the one that I came up with so y equals to 9.5 times well two hours is 120 minutes correct wait 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 yes two hours after the plane took off and maintain cruising speed wait hold on a second 120 is the whole entire time that the plane has been flying since it took off but remember when it took off it spent 32 minutes reaching cruising altitude so therefore in reality out of that 120 minutes the two hours only 88 minutes okay were used for uh, cru uh, were flown during cruising altitude. Oh, okay. So then, this gives me a total of 836. And let's corroborate 9.5 times 88. Again, yes, battery low, I know that. Okay, so 9.5 times 88. Yep, 836. There you have it. Okay. So, assuming that the plane maintains its speed at cruising altitude, determine the total number of miles the plane has flown two hours into the flight. All right, cool then. So, 836 miles were flown at cruising altitude. You understand that? But then again, 
remember something that when he was when the plane was trying to reach cruising altitude look it, sp it spent it spent 32 minutes and it actually flew 192 miles so then I have to add you see the 32 minutes that I took off over here because I just wanted the cruising altitude but then again in 32 minutes the plane flew 192 miles it is information that was given to me so that's what I'm gonna do and now that gives me a total of 1,028 miles and that's it that's your answer alright so I'll see you in the next episode on how do we pass our common core algebra regions this was hard Bye.